Hi, and welcome to this little quickie. Today we're going to be answering a question from Jean-Louis. And Jean-Louis wants to know how to produce a domed or convex pulley. Now, we don't produce many uh, domed or convex pulleys these days, well, mainly because flat belts aren't being used very often. They used to be used a lot in shops because a main drive motor could, with overhead transmission shafts, drive all the machines. But today things just aren't done that way. But there is one place where the basic principles still apply. And I'm talking about belt sanders. Now, belt sanders use flat belts. They are drive belts, but they are flat belts. A major problem with flat belts is that they don't track easily. And that means that if we use a flat-faced pulley uh, for our flat belt, well, the belt will tend to run off of the pulley if there's any, even a minute, misalignment or misadjustment. And that's problematic. However, if we produce pulleys that are slightly domed or convex, well, that will help greatly with keeping the belt on track. And that's what Jean-Louis wants to produce, a slightly convex pulley for his belt sander project. Now, these days, belt sanders seem to be a very popular project for home machinists. I invite you to go take a look at Lee Peden's series of videos on building his belt sander. Great stuff. For us, we're going to get over to the lathe and start producing our blank to eventually profile the dome. Now, I am not going to be paying much attention to dimensions here mainly because I'm not producing a real pulley, I'm just demonstrating a technique.
Now, I have a nice flat surface here, and I have a nice flat surface there and here. But what I don't have is a nice surface on the exterior here. So I want to make this concentric, so I'm going to mount it to come and turn. And that's why I left this boss on there. It's important to plan ahead of time because you can think of things like that. Now this boss is going to keep me away from the surface of my chuck and give me some room to work, especially when I start profiling. And there's my part ready for profiling. Now, there's several ways of accomplishing this profile. Uh, one we've already heard about because you could use the same technique that we used in our uh, turning a half ball a little quickie some time ago. Here's a link to that. It's the same technique, you just turn it a tenth of a ball instead of half of a ball. So that's one way, and that's using coordinates. Another way, obviously, would be with numerical control. Yet another, well, would be to hack away at it with a file and a gauge until you got the curve or the profile that you're looking for. But the technique that we're going to look at here is really a transfer. So we're going to transfer the shape of a template to our part, and we're going to do that using a turning tool that has a radius quite similar or at least comparable to the radius of the tip on your dial indicator. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have our form or a template that we want to transfer to our part and that's the curve here of this large V pulley. I've chosen this but obviously if you were doing something accurate you might have to produce yourself a template with the proper diameter. Now, this is clamped to the ways. Be careful not to damage your machine. And it's clamped in a way that it's accessible to this dial indicator. And you can see that the dial indicator is in contact with the template. It's set on zero. And it's mounted on the compound rest. That it be mounted on the compound rest is not important. What is important is that it's mounted somehow to the cross slide so that it can move with the cross slide. If we see here, we see that I do get movement with the cross line. And that's important. So I'll bring myself back to zero here. So it moves with the cross slide. So this cutting operation is going to be using the longitudinal feed and the cross slide movement to perform the transfer. Once I've started transferring, I don't want to move my compound rest and change my position. So, that's that. Now, all this is mounted on zero. And by the way, your dial indicator doesn't have to be perfectly perpendicular or perfectly level. Close is good enough. We're only producing, as I said, about 15 degrees here. So, we're going to have good contact, even if it's a little off at an angle. I'm not measuring here with that. I'm just coming back to zero all the time and you'll see in a few seconds. Now with this all set up as we've just described, what's important up here is to have our tool set up on the center of our part or more or less and just barely in contact. So to recap, 
we have template dial indicator more or less perpendicular in contact with our template at zero I have my tool in contact just barely with my part on its center we're good to go so I'm ready to fire up this beast of a machine but before I do that I want to get my safety glasses out very very important don't forget now another thing I want to mention because I can hear the fireworks popping here uh, you have put the dial indicator about on the center of your template and you've put your tool about on the center of the part how are you going to make certain that the crest of the curve that you're going to produce here is really on the center of the pulley that you're producing getting the dial indicator perfectly on center of your template is not an easy thing to do it's doable it's just not easy and getting at the same time your tool on the center of the part well that also is not easy to do and it's doubly difficult because they both have to happen at the same time so what I've done here is I've planned ahead I mean you divide and conquer that's how we work in the shop if you meet a problem how do you resolve it well if you resolve it by going around the problem well that's a good way of resolving it right and that's what we've done here I've left my blank a little oversized width wise oh that's hard for a Frenchman to say so it's a little wider than it needs to be now why would I do that well because then I can get my dial indicator about on center and I can get my tool about on center and I can do that quickly and easily and then well once I'm done here I will surface my pulley on each side taking more off one or the other of the two sides to bring my center back I mean I have to surface this afterwards anyways to take the boss that I've left on there off so it'll just help me out and it's really made setup a lot easier remember planning is everything there my surface as far as machining goes is complete it has the proper curve but it does not have the proper dimension and why is that well because right now it is a succession of small grooves that are radius okay and that well the concave radius and that means that it's the bottom of those grooves that are at the proper dimension so what do I want to do I want to knock the top of those grooves often what we call cuspids off of the surface how am I going to do that accurately well I'm going to apply we saw this with the half ball technique I'm going to apply a small amount or some layout blue on the part in my case I'm going to use a blue sharpie and then I am going to come and just lightly file until I just barely erase the layout blue watch out don't use abrasive paper for this because it will slightly conform to the grooves no you want to use a fine file now just take enough off to erase the blue and you will have your part at its proper dimension however to do it now would be a little dangerous I got too much stuff going on here too much junk in the way it's unsafe so I'm going to tear down this setup leave my piece in place and that will give me some room to work. See you in a few minutes.
have to do is flip the part around and surface the side that had the boss on it because who wants a boss? I don't want a boss. And then, well, I'll be the proud owner of a domed or crowned pulley. saw can be used for other shapes than convex. Uh, we could have produced a concave shape or even a profile. Basically if you can make a template of what you want you can transfer it to your part with this technique. So I hope Jean-Louis that this answers your question and well for everyone else have fun. Be safe. It's very important and happy machining. Mm -hmm.